Good morning. It is very cold today, but I just finished my artificial intelligence course uh, at university. That is AI 320 Intelligent Systems. I'm waiting for my exam mark at the moment. But today I thought I would make a video about all the things I actually learned in that artificial intelligence course um, that computer engineers, third year computer engineers take a tux. I'm fourth year, but you know, doing some third year courses to catch up, whatever, not the point. Um, and it was a really good introduction to artificial intelligence and all of the things that I learned and things that I thought I knew about artificial intelligence that the course taught me I didn't know, but that are far more complex and more interesting, I would like to share with you today. And so let's get straight into it. To start off with, the actual course content that was covered in the module was a lot different to what I expected. You know, growing up on the internet and spending enough time on the internet, you kind of think that the only thing in artificial intelligence is neural networks. And I was kind of out of this delusion as well. But as we went through the course, you know, it turns out there's a lot of other data structures and algorithms that are considered, you know, intelligence uh, or machines emulating intelligence uh, that form part of the umbrella of artificial intelligence and machine learning. So, you know, we, we delved into much more the mathematical basis and the first principle basis of some of these algorithms and data structures rather than learning, you know, high end frameworks like TensorFlow or learning how to do, you know, generative adversarial networks and that that you, they use to do speech recognition and speech generation. We did far more of the first principle stuff, which, you know, at Varsity is the point, I guess, is to learn the deeply mathematical theoretical basis of the subject you're trying to get into. Um, but yeah, our practicals were in plain Python and mostly focused on the first principle stuff. Uh, the practicals, the first one was a depth first search and breadth first search um, uninformed search tree implementation. The second practical, um, that was a genetic algorithm practical where we had to go and uh, you generate um, different uh, different individuals and then breed them together to form better results. I'll talk more about that later. The third practical was a neural network. That was awesome, I really enjoyed that one. And then the fourth practical was a naive Bayes classifier, all written in plain Python without libraries and that. Obviously in future, when you're coding that stuff, you'll use libraries, but uh, doing it from a first principles approach really helped me understand it well. And yeah, the practice were good. There was a lot of probability in the course that I did not expect, but I mean, Bayesian learning and machine learning, a lot of it actually just is finding relationships between uh, one factor and another factor, or you know, one piece of data and another piece of data. And the way those relationships are represented in most, the most mathematical way possible is with probability theory. And so Bayesian probability theory has been the bane of my life for the past couple of months, but I now at least understand it a bit better and you know, can use it. So yeah, let's actually go now straight into all the different things, all the different algorithms and data structures that the course covered, since I think it's actually a pretty good introduction. And so to start off with, we started with uninformed search and informed searches through different tree-like structures. So A star search trees, depth first search trees, breadth first search trees, uniform cost trees, and greedy search. Uh, these are the kind of algorithms that you sort through a whole lot of um, relationship, relational data or rather sequential data and try to find the best solution to a problem. Um, chess, uh, chess bots, artificial intelligence bots that play chess use search trees like this. They go down a long list of possible game states that arise from if you move the bishop forward in this direction or if you move your queen to that spot on the board, what will the likelihood, what will the different moves that are possible be after that? And then basically searching down the tree like that um, and finding the best solution for your, for your problem. And so we did a whole lot of different search trees basically and just all the different algorithms and heuristic functions that you can use in those search trees to make searching more efficient and to make finding solutions more efficient. Efficient. We also then went on to do hill climbing and linear regression, basically fitting curves to data and finding minimum and maximum solutions respectively. So like simulated annealing, k-nearest neighbors we also used here. So basically different algorithms for searching and classifying through big hunks of data. You know, if you've got a huge amount of data on air pollution and house prices, is there any correlation between that and is there a way to fit a line um, to that data that predicts what a house price is based on the air pollution in that area or you know uh, where that area is located or any other number of factors you know, can you fit a curve to that data so the linear regression behind that we tackled in some mathematical detail then uh, one of the favorite parts of the course actually my favorites at least was the genetic algorithm section and so this was basically using the theory of natural selection and evolution and that 
to basically design solutions or design uh, you know uh, individuals that might solve a problem and then change them mutate them randomly uh, change the way they uh, respond to different circumstances and then breed them together with other similarly mutated individuals to try and create better offspring so a lot of our practicals actually were done oh sorry all of our practicals were done in the context of a rock paper scissors game and trying to find uh, a bot or trying to create a bot or an, a computer program that can beat another opposing bot in a game of rock paper scissors and then basically at the beginning you generated a whole sequence of rock paper scissors um, instructions so if you are starting the game you play this if you're halfway through the game you play this you know rock paper or scissors and then creating a whole bunch of different sequences of rock paper scissors like that and then blending them together and, and you know playing them against each other you know actually competing with each other and then selecting the best offspring or the best the most well competing uh most well performing agents in the rock paper scissors game and then breeding them together with other well performing instantiations of your algorithm and then getting better and better results as you go on so basically like natural selection and evolution emulated which was really cool and we did it in a basic example of rock paper scissors but the possibilities of expanding it are really kind of endless and really exciting <sighs> Then we also went on to learn about game theory and the different um, kind of environments that games and multi-agent situations can find themselves in. In particular, what I mentioned earlier, chess is actually, you know, a game uh, with one opponent trying to maximize their chances of winning and minimize their opponent's chances of winning. And then basically also what I mentioned to you about the search trees, going down a search tree using something called alpha beta pruning to most efficiently find the solution in the future that will net you the best possible chance of winning the game. So in chess, going down a list of certain moves and down a, lit, uh, a list of certain board uh, configurations where pieces are on the board and deciding which one in the future will be best for you and then choosing the move that will get you closest to that move. So that was cool and game theory is really cool. Um, but then on to the stuff that I battled with the most during the course and that was probability and Bayesian statistics. So it's the most powerful part of artificial intelligence and machine learning and probably the part that will be able to do the most cool things in the future. But it's also the part that is the most complicated because have you ever looked at Bayesian probability and Bayesian networks? So kind of confusing. And it's basically just the relationships between certain variables and how they interact with each other and how they can cause, uh, how they cause and effect relate to each other. But you know, the prob probability tools like marginalization, probabilistic inference, um, Markov blankets, Bayes law, that's the kind of stuff that takes a bit of study. And I must admit, I did get a lot better near the end of the semester after doing a lot more examples than that. And maybe you, Darren, if you're watching this, don't find it as difficult as I do. But um, yeah, I, I struggled with it a lot. And a lot of people who do the course do say that probability is what uh, hurts them the most, especially in the second semester test. I got like 25% for that semester test because I didn't understand what was going on. But I understood it much better by the time the exam came around. Um, so yeah, that uh, probability theory and Bayesian statistics really tripped me up, but uh, I think it's really powerful. And you know, it, it underlies a lot of the machine learning computations that you can do, especially with Naive Bayes. Naive Bayes uses the um, independence and relationships between certain variables to predict um, other, other variables. So you know, the probability of it being sunny, the probability, probability of it being windy, the probability of it being rainy, and then, you know, the probability of, um, I don't know, snow can all be mashed together in different configurations to give you different answers, you know, to give you a prediction of whether it's going to rain today based on the, the snowiness outside or based on whether it's going to be hot today based on the chances of snow or the snow based on the chances of, you know, temperature or the temperature based on snow, you know, that kind of thing. I'm not explaining it well, you can go Google it, but really powerful implementations that rely on Bayes theory, Bayes law, sorry and you know fundamental understanding of the probability so that was cool and it was worthwhile learning and i wouldn't have learned it if i had gone out to learn machine learning and artificial intelligence by myself on the internet and so you know you come around to the point of why university degree and in particular first principles approach to learning stuff in a hard mathematical theoretical way can be beneficial to you 
And then later in the semester, we actually come around to the things that most people generally consider as to be artificial intelligence or the useful applications of artificial intelligence, and that is learning. Supervised and unsupervised learning, you know, whether or not your learning algorithm gets feedback while it's busy training itself. But using things like classification and regression with decision trees, which are big lists of decisions and that to take when deciding on a program or when deciding on what sequence of actions to take during a program. And neural networks, of course, you know, big mathematical representations of decisions and functions uh, using individual neurons or individual little decisions, you know, basically a zero or one decision, all connected together in layers that if given inputs, give certain outputs. And if you have the answers to certain inputs, so you have a whole lot of data that you put in, you know, pictures of cats, and you have labeled data at the end, you know, whether or not the picture is of a cat or not, you can go back using back propagation and step through your neural network and train and change the values of certain neurons in your neural network to best represent the input that gives you the output of a cat. So you put in, in, you put in a picture of a dog, it comes out and it says, this is a cat, but then you tell your neural network, no, that is not a dog, that is not a cat, that's a dog. And then you go back and you change certain values of certain neurons uh, in your network and in your different layers so that the answer becomes dog. And if you do this for enough training data and enough computation, you can eventually train your neural network to recognize a new picture of a cat as being a cat or a new picture of a dog as not being a cat. You know, I'm just using a basic example like that, but you know, using loss functions and using um, a, com a connection of neurons and weights and biases and uh, I mentioned loss functions and mathematical functions, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of derivations. No, what? Differentiation. That's the one I was looking for. Um, you can really train your network to recognize certain things and even to generate certain things given certain inputs and given enough data. And that uh, was really cool for me. Obviously, it's the, the coolest part of the module and the coolest, uh, the most, probably the most useful part of the module. But um, really learning how neural networks work and how actually you can take something as dumb as a collection of numbers to mo model a very complicated function that we would generally associate with intelligence, like recognizing a cat or dog or classifying something or even generating new outputs based on a whole lot of given inputs. And that was really cool and like the pinnacle of the module for me and I really enjoyed it. And I'm really looking forward to learning more stuff in the future like TensorFlow and more advanced uh, neural networks that you can use to do all those amazing things that I've been talking about. But yeah, overall the module was a really great introduction to artificial intelligence and machine learning. I feel like I've learned a lot from it. Um, and you know, not just knowing the, the buzzword neural networks and that, but also, you know, other things that I never even considered or thought of like genetic algorithms or search trees or, you know, basic data structures that are actually really powerful and really simulate human intelligence really well. Um, you know, learning all these different techniques and solutions to emulate intelligence was really cool for me. And, uh, you know, kind of also brought home the point of think a bit to me that humans aren't in as intelligent as we think, you know, whatever you want to define consciousness or intelligence as a lot of human behavior and human decision making is actually pattern recognition. And based on your experiences in the past, making decisions uh, in the present and for the future based on those experiences in the past. And if you've got enough storage and enough memory and enough computation, computers can do a damn good job at emulating that as well uh, by you know, reasoning forward with decisions and data from the past. Um, and yeah, it was just really interesting to me and I really enjoyed it. So yeah, I'm excited to move into the future of computer science and use what I have learned. I know that the guys doing computer science do separate artificial intelligence courses to us. They don't do the same ones as us because this is specifically engineering artificial intelligence, intelligence systems. We com Computer engineering is the only degree that does this module. So I'm not sure what the computer science guys do or how involved uh, their artificial intelligence is. I assume it is something similar. I'll throw up quickly the uh, yearbook, uh, rep the yearbook for the module that the computer science guys do here to give you a generalization of how it compares to the EAI one that I just did here. I'll put that up on screen as well. Um, but yeah, interesting. But thanks for watching. That has been, our, this has been a video all about what the EAI 320 Intelligence Systems Artificial Intelligence course was like at Tux uh, for computer engineering. I just finished it now, I'm waiting for my exam mark. If by the time I publish this video, I've got my exam mark, I'll throw it up here or in the description. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot for watching. I'll catch you in the next one and yeah, see you later.